You're watching Adam the Bull on the Bet Rivers Network. Welcome, everybody, to the latest edition of the Bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. Coming up on today's podcast, a rare time where we're talking a little less sports, but hopefully you'll hang in there. My friend and comedian Don Jameson, a favorite here in Cleveland. He's based out of New Jersey, but he loves coming to Cleveland, comes here a couple of times a year. He's got a new album coming out. He's got a new podcast on the way, and he's going to be performing this weekend at the Funny Stop. And we can't I can't wait to see him again. And I can't wait for you you to see him. We're going to have a lot of fun talking with the great comedian Don Jameson. But and it's all, of course, brought to you by Bet Rivers. Folks, if you are not using the Bet Rivers app or if you are not using the Bet Rivers website from a home computer, what are you doing? Uh, It is so easy to navigate. It's where I get all my prop bets that I send your way. And for now on, we're doing it. We were doing the Thursday props. We're going to change that up. We're now going to be I'm now going to be putting out some videos every Tuesday and Friday to give my best prop bets on those days, Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, Those are days it's just we're doing for baseball. We'll probably do it in the football season, too. But uh, on Tuesdays and Fridays, most teams play as opposed to when I was doing it Thursday. This is usually a small slate of games. So I want to have a little more variety to pick games. So it's going to be awesome. We'll We'll have special boosts for you. At the Bet Rivers site, Bet Rivers app, it is again. It's great to use, very convenient, easy to read. So make sure you're checking out the Bet Rivers app. Uh, yesterday, if you bet on the Guardians, it didn't turn out well. The Guardians, with just their third loss of the season, falling to the Chicago White Sox seven to five. Um, what's frustrating is that so Logan Allen got smoked. Obviously, I think he was what, five or six of the first seven batters all reached got smoked in the first inning. Gives up five runs in the first. And the Guardians rally to come back. They get they get two right there in the bottom of the first. They get one in the third, two in the fourth. So now we're 5-5. Five, five. You go to the eighth inning. Allen was able to, after the first inning, get through three more innings and actually pitch well after that. It was just a bizarre first inning. And Eli Morgan, Sandlin, Gaddis, they all combined, did a great job in the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh. Uh, one hit, no walks, four Ks in three innings for those guys. Unfortunately, Scott Barlow, who's been a little up and down early in this season, had a rough game in the eighth inning in the 5-5 tie. He gives up a pair of runs, and the Guardians' uh, winning streak comes to an end, their first home loss. You got to – got to. Got to is silly this early in the season, but you really like to see the Guardians um, bounce back today, the third and final game of the series. When you're when you're going to be in a dogfight, as I think they will be for the division, you don't want to be losing series to the White Sox. The White Sox are a bad team. You can't win every game, but you got to win. You got to win the series. So hopefully they they uh, after they blew that after they fell behind big early, came back and then lost. It's, it's a tough loss. Um, hopefully they can uh, take care of business today in the final game of the series. Was good to see in the loss. Josh Naylor at least hit his second home run of the year. Um, because as we know, we talked about it on the Ultimate Cleveland Guardian show yesterday. Uh, it's it's not sustainable to be top five and run scored if you're on the bottom of home runs. Again, you don't have to be at the top of home runs, but you can't be at the bottom. You got to at least be somewhere in the mix. Somewhere... Uh, in the middle, at least. And I, I think the middle, we'd all we'd all sign for that for the Guardians this year. Final game of the series, as we mentioned, uh, the Guardians have the edge in the pitching advantage. Uh, Tanner Bybee will be on the hill against Eric Fetty. Although Eric Fetty, uh, who at one time was a big-time prospect, and then he pitched, I want to say he pitched in Korea or Japan last year. I can't remember. Um he uh, he's pitched well so far this season. Tanner Bybee, uh, not a good first start, but he was excellent in his second start. And uh, so we'll hope that the Guardians could win this series before a big series this weekend against the New York Yankees. It's going to be a lot of fun with the Yankees coming to town. The pitching matchups for the Guardians and Yankees this weekend, we told you, we, me, I told you. <laughs> That it'll be Bybee and Fetty today in the final series against the White Sox. For the Yan- in the Yankee series, the pitching mat- matchups are now set. On Friday, it's going to be Carlos Carrasco against Clark Schmidt. On Saturday, Tristan McKenzie will move up a day 
but he's still on normal rest because he pitched Monday. He'll face Luis Gill, uh, a rookie for the Yankees. That's the Saturday game. And then Sunday, it'll be Logan Allen, who obviously got knocked out early yesterday. Normal rest on Sunday. He'll face Nestor Cortez. And then that at that point, either on Monday or Tuesday, they'll have to call up either Ben Lively, who made his second rehab start yesterday in Columbus. He had but three, three runs in like five innings, one strikeout, but only four hits and no walks. Xavion Curry is pitching tonight in Columbus, weather permitting. And so they'll either go with, after Bybee pitches today, they'll either go Bybee on Monday. Remember on Monday, the, the Guardians are in Boston, a four-game series. That's the 11, 10 a.m. game when they have their, um, their uh, marathon. And so they play that early game. So either they'll go with Bybee on Monday or they'll stick with Bybee on Tuesday. Would not be short rest either way. But either Monday or Tuesday night in Boston, you'll see either probably Ben Lively or Xavion Curry get a start. And by then, they'd be on normal rest off their both their second rehab starts. So we'll see if what they do. But uh, that that whoever it is it will, will pitch against Boston and not the Yankees this weekend. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, my friend, great comedian, he is awesome. Don Jameson is going to join me in the bullpen next, brought to you by Bet Rivers. Hey, everybody. During each round of the Masters, Bet Rivers is offering live betting specials. Visit the Bet Rivers app for full details and discover what bonus awaits each day of the tournament. All right, we are back in the bullpen with Adam the Bull. And joining me now, a good friend. And we've uh, had him on the radio, on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, and now for the first time on the podcast, my pal Don Jameson. Don, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. You too, man. Um, th- this is so exciting. When I-, I was getting the link to come on here, and I see the name Brian Monzo yeah. pop up. And I'm a like, that's a- d- like you, a WFAN New York bonafide legend uh you know worked with everybody over there but M- M- mike francesa yes uh, so if he can handle francesa he can handle the bull yeah definitely I, I you know mike's awesome but uh i'm less high maintenance than mike uh, can i say C- that Monzo, or, do we have, or do we have C- to cut that out <laughs> do you ever yell that at him just to no keep i don't mind? yell nothing at him uh, you know. Oh, jeez! Come on, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, it's funny though. When I and I've told this story before, when I was working at the fan, you know, when I first met Mike, I was intimidated because the guy is a legend, right? He'd been on the air for many years, and here I am, a young guy getting my first opportunity. And I did. I remember doing my first show. I filled in around Thanksgiving of 2007, and. Uh, the next week, I think it was the following Monday, maybe Mike and the Mad Dog are reviewing my first show. And I, you know, they'd done that before. And I was like, that's it. I've made it. Mike and the Mad Dog were reviewing my show and they were complimentary, except uh, I had made I, I had like screwed up. I, I think I said the Yankees home opener and the Mets, I think I confused the dates or something. I yeah. screwed, I made a mistake. And Mad Dog was all over me. He's like, you got to know that. You got to know this that. This is what terrible. That's a terrible job, Adam. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> but it was awesome. But I'll tell you, when, when I got offered this gig in Cleveland, I remember, um, I think it was Mark Chernoff said to me, Mike wants to talk to you. And I had talked to Mike a little bit, but not a ton. And he'd always been nice to me, always. Um, and we chatted here and there, but like, I never had like a meeting with him and, and yeah. Mark Chernoff is like, Mike wants to talk to you. And I'm like, Whoa. So like, what, what's <laughs> happening here? Mike wants to talk to me. So I go into Mike's office and I meet with him and he couldn't have been nicer, honestly. And I know, you know, people bust his balls and it's, you know, it's fine. That's part of the thing. And people, uh, criticize him, but to me, always nice when he, he, he I was in his office and he's like, Paul, I think you're going to do great in Cleveland. You're going to do great. It's a great sport. And I didn't know anything about Cleveland. Like, I had just, I really didn't know. I had never been to Cleveland in my life. And he's like, you're going to do great. It's a great sports town. It's a great place to start a station. And you know what? He was 100% right. 
He said he said it would work out well for me here, and he was a hundred percent correct. And I really appreciated that. That that built. You know, I'm always been a pretty confident person, but that that really built my confidence even more when when Mike said that. Well, yeah. Like, did you did you have to kiss his ring when you I went did. in there? Was it like a Godfather Absolutely. thing? Yes. You know, hundred percent. You know, I just was hoping he wouldn't cut my head off. You you come to me on the day you're going to Cleveland and ask me for a favor. Yeah, <laughs> you know that was it. That's cool though. Yeah, I, I look. I always I miss the old um, WFA in New York people, and I'm with you, man. Like, you know, if 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 people like Mad Dog and Mike, you know, even if they ripped your 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 air uh, thing apart, yeah. it's like no, I I made it. It was like when I That's when right. I did um the first year I did the the show Beer Money on SNY here. <laughs> In New York, which is yeah. the Mets channel, I know. Sure. I know Cleveland has a local version of Beer Money. Yeah. Probably every market does, right? Yeah. And I, I was one of the new hosts along with this woman, Maylene Ramey, and they gave us tickets to to a Met game. And Kevin Burkhart was in the crowd with us, and you know they were going to throw down from the booth. You know Keith and Ron and and Gary, and you know they come down to us. Oh, hey, let's meet the new uh, hosts of Beer Money and. Uh, they introduce us and Kevin and we talk for a minute and they throw back to the booth and my mom, my mom, my mom called me and she's, I go, I go, wasn't that great? She goes, yeah. But as soon as they went back to the booth, you know, Gary was like, well, we welcome them, you know, to the SNY family and Keith Hernandez, who's one of my baseball heroes went, that guy didn't look like he knew anything about sports. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I loved him oh. even more after that, yeah. bro. Yeah. Because that's Keith, you know? Right. Keith's the man. So um, I didn't mind that he he tore me apart. And yeah. I got two good seasons out of that gig, man. That's that was right. a lot of fun. Nice. So let's talk about a couple of, speaking of gigs. First of all, you come into Cleveland. Everybody loves you when you come to Cleveland. It's always a funny show. You're going to be at the Funny Stop this weekend, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? Uh, Thursday. No, just uh, Friday, Saturday. Oh, just Friday, Saturday. Okay. See, Two shows each night, Cuyahoga Falls. Yeah. You know what the good news is, though? When I screw up now, I can say I fucked up, you know, because it's a podcast. <laughs> I, I don't have to worry about those radio rules anymore. So Friday night, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday, right? Yep, 7.30 and 9.30. And, um, yeah, we, you know, I recorded an album there. You know, I, so I, I, you know how much I love that room because yeah. it's just – it's just a good comedy room. Like if we fill that room up, man, and we get that thing rocking, man, it's it's like you're at a sporting event. You know, it's a really fun time in there. Yeah, no, no doubt. I've been to see you there a number of times. I got to talk to you about that too. I think I'm gonna try to come this okay. weekend. I got to. My wife's out of town, so I got to find some coverage for my son. But I think he's a little too young. I think he's a little too young at at ten. But uh, yeah, <laughs> no. But, he you know, but uh, but uh, yeah, I, I want to try to make it. And I want to see you this weekend. And you speaking of albums, new album coming out in ten days. Tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, April nineteenth. No sleep. T- oh, it's oh, there. It is. It's blending into my background because it is my background. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But uh, no sleep till McSorley's, which is a play on the great Motorhead live album. No sleep till Hammersmith. Right. Um, but I recorded mine at a place that that you know and Mons probably knows very well from being East Coasters is McSorley's Old Ale House in New York City. Of course. And that's, you know, have you ever been inside there, Adam? I was there, yes. I mean, years and years ago. I want to say, I want to say I was in my early 20s. I mean, probably like 30 years ago. So like so like the early 1900s. <laughs> Something like that. You know, just after yeah. the Civil War. Well, it was open. It was it opened in 1863 for Damn. real, and it's one. It's one. And Abe Lincoln actually drank at McSorley's. Wow, um, I didn't know. And that. they got his. Yeah, it's like a real historical pub yeah. in New York, and it's the kind of place where you go and you all sit around big wooden tables, and there's sawdust on the floor. Um, you can only drink McSorley's ale. That's all they have. McSorley's light and McSorley's dark. There's no wine. There's no beer, booze. There's no yeah. nothing. And and if you're with four people and there's six empty seats, they bring pe- anybody who comes in. They put them right at your table. Yeah. And next thing you know, you're hanging out with people from you know all over the country, all over the world. Yeah. You're solving the world's problems, drinking McSorley's ale. You're making best friends. You're planning on going to Norway the next summer to visit you know your new best friends, and you're hanging with people from Canada. And it's it's the real social media. And I thought yeah. 
Like that's the perfect setting for what I'm doing because I'm trying to solve all the world's problems, you know, humorously on this record. So I thought, wow, McSorley's is this is the place to do it, like with some beer drinkers and hellraisers. It is, and and it is a challenging time for comedy. As you know, I I've always felt that comedians should be immune to all the political correctness and the nonsense. And it's not just one side, contrary to popular belief. Oh, yeah. Like both it, it, the problem in our country is always is the extremes on both sides. And both sides get pissed if you make fun of their guy or their, you know, whatever, their cause. Yeah. And that that shit is annoying. It's like you're a comedian, do your thing. You shouldn't have to worry about some asshole putting you on you know, YouTube and you're going to get canceled by the right or you're going to get canceled by the left. Like sh- both sides should shut the F up. It's comedy. We're not, you're not, tr- you're not trying to, uh, uh, you know, put policy in place to, for people. You're trying to make people laugh. If you don't like it, then leave and go see a different comedian. You dumbass. Well, yeah, man. It's like, you know, well, first of all, you know, I, you know, I, I appreciate you think I might ha- actually have enough of a career that someone could, would want to cancel me, but there's <laughs> nothing to cancel. Okay. I'm, <laughs> you know, I just opened up for a white snake tribute band a few weeks ago. <laughs> Love it. Called he called here. I go again. Nice. Again. Were they good? And, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh. But <laughs> it's, it's, no, but Adam, here's the thing. You're, yeah. you're you, everything you said, I love because you know, the, the, but the cool thing is the people who like, who sit at home and argue with like, Someone on Twitter who has three followers in Portugal. Yeah, you know those people aren't going to have fun at my show anyway. Right. Yeah. You yeah, know, if you want to, if you're an adult and you want to come out and laugh, you know, I'm not the, um, I'm not. The, I didn't want to be the, uh, you know, the old guy get off my lawn guy. I don't want to preach to any audiences, but I'm gonna, I am gonna tell it like it is. But you know, politically and everything else, I go right down the middle, you know, because I know there's people on both sides of every issue. Like I could take both sides pretty much of any issue. So, you know, I I know the guy who hung sheetrock for 50 hours a week or the guy, you know, like you who works, what, 30, 45 minutes a week doing podcasts, (laughs) That's right. you know, (laughs) it's hard earned money. And and you want to just go and laugh. You don't want to be, you know, preached to by some idiot from New Jersey telling you who to vote for or or what to like or what not to like. So it's, you know, it's a little something for everybody. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, that room is so cool. Yeah, it is. And, and Don always does a fun show. And I've seen you a bunch of times now at this point. Um, yeah. Do you? Uh, I I want to talk about this new podcast you just told me about. You'll be doing a, a podcast called Rock Strap, which sounds awesome. Sounds like something right up my alley. Uh, I'm not an athlete nor a musician, but I would like to have been both because that's what I. I mean, those are the two coolest jobs in the world. I mean, being a comedian, being a sports talk show host, those those are up there. Those are near the top. But rock star and athlete are the two coolest jobs ever. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And and I noticed like over the years, you know, when I when I did uh, that metal show, uh, which was a show on VH1 Classic for, yep. for people who weren't familiar with it, it wasn't a shipbuilding show or a welding show. It was a, a heavy metal talk show. Right. Um, and you, and what you what I found out is whether it was backstage, you know, before the show in the green room or even before the camera started rolling. You end up started talking sports with a lot of these rock guys, yeah. and you find out wow, a lot of these guys really love rock music. Like when Getty Lee did our show from Rush, you know, we found out like what a massive Toronto Blue Jays fan he is. You know, obviously a yeah. hockey fan as well, because you know that's the law in Canada. But sure, he's a huge baseball fan, and I think he's I think his um I think his collection um up there is like I think it's like designated as a museum. That's how crazy his sports memorabilia collection is so i started you know making a mental note of that and uh, me and my buddy keith roth who's a dj on sirius xm on the rock stations he's a huge sports fan uh, he and i have a lot of different teams which i right. think will make for a good you know you know you don't want to agree on everything right so right, we're gonna have, we'll have good debate about um sports stuff but that's what yeah. we're gonna do we're gonna interview sports guys about rock stars and rock stars about you know athletes famous sports athletes that's awesome and and their favorite teams so yeah that's gonna be coming up in a couple months but yeah it's called the rock strap fittingly so who who uh who is your 
the a, a guest you, you're excited to try to get on? Like, is there somebody on the top of that list that you're like, I oh, got to get this guy? Yeah, well, for sure, you know, my friend Mike Piazza, you know, Mike's been a friend for many years. He's, the, he's to me, the quis, quintessential guy who is a crazy, crazy, you know, rock guy. Yeah. Um, but obviously a baseball legend and a Hall of Famer. And, uh, you know, I met him through my old co-host, uh, Eddie Trunk. Right. And uh, those because he used to listen to Eddie's radio show when he played for the Mets. Yeah. And so via Eddie, I got to become friends with Mike. And That's awesome. um, yeah, I helped him write some material like when he did like Jimmy Kimmel show and, you know, when he used to do like more more appearances and stuff. So I know Mike very well. And he you know, when you get him like this, he just starts geeking out on all you know everything with rock. Yeah. Um, so if we can work out the time difference, he's in Italy now. Um, we oh, definitely really? have Mike. Yeah. He yeah. lives there year round. Yeah. He's still got a place in Miami, but he, yeah. you know, he, you know, he, he bought a, he had a soccer team over there for a while. Oh. And now he's got a baseball team. So oh, nice. That is and cool. Randy Johnson too. You oh, know, really? I know Randy, I know Randy pretty well too. He's a massive uh, rock fan. And um, I met Randy. They, there was a concert um, called the big four. And it was, it was so the big four of thrash. It was Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax. Yeah. And it was at Yankee Stadium. And I'm on standing on the side of the stage, um, watching Metallica play. You know, and there's fire everywhere, and you know, fire, everything's going. You know, huge stage show. And I look out in the crowd, and I just see this head that's like a foot and a half above everybody's walking through the crowd with a camera taking pictures. Yeah. And as he got closer to the front, I went, is that Randy Johnson? <laughs> and it was, wow. and it, it turns out he's been like a big rock photographer for like, you know, since he retired. That is crazy. By the way, yeah. if, if you took like, let's say you took Piazza and Randy Johnson and like two other athletes that are into music and you took four rock legends that you know that are into sports, and you had a trivia contest, and the sports guys answered rock and roll questions or rock <laughs> questions, and the rock guys answered sports questions, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who would win if you had to predict that right now? Oh, boy. I, I You know, I think the rock guys would win. You think you so? Know? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um... That's just my instinct. I don't really have a reason, but you just gave me a, a great idea for an alternate podcast. There you go. Don Jameson, Adam the Bull, produced by Brian Monzo. Let's, let's, let's put it together. Yeah. And you know what? Every week we could have like three athletes and three rock stars, and they compete. And who knows? we <laughs> got sure come Monzo up with some... would love to book that. <laughs> yeah, Monzo, let's get on this here. We got good prizes. I don't know what we're going to do. I, you know. <laughs> We gotta have cheer. We have, will we have cheerleaders? I think we'd have to have cheerleaders. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if we're allowed to do that anymore. But um, you know, we'll <laughs> we can AI them in or something. I don't know. <laughs> Don, I know that wherever you go, and I know especially in Cleveland, uh, you always do some material that's you know about the area you're in. Is that is how challenging is that, and and how much. Like, how much do you do that? Uh, you know, I don't know if you have a percentage or whatever, but and how yeah. tough is that to be able to do that everywhere you go? Well, I, I, Adam, I, I want to let everybody know that's watching this. Um, I have a, a new 15 minute chunk about the Cleveland Lake Shores of 1900. And, um, you know, I think people are really going to get a good kick out of that. That was the original name of the Indians in, in, in the year 1900. So, this, so um, yeah, it's good. It's it's going to pop off, man. It's, okay. it's good material. You know, a lot of, a lot of 1900 humor uh, in there. But no, I don't know. Man. You yeah. know, I spend a lot of time out there. Yeah. So I observe a lot of stuff. Yeah. So when I do. Yeah, of course, I always I always take it to the stage with me. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, there's always the standard kind of two or three places you can make fun of. Like, the, you know, there's still an Arthur Treacher's across the street from the funny <laughs> stuff. I know the last one, I think. <laughs> like they, the parent company doesn't even know it's there. I'm convinced of it. Like that, that like they're squ they must be like company squatters in there. You know, that <laughs> squatters is the big thing. They must be squatting in the Arthur Tree shirts and they just 
Okay, we own it now, so we got to keep, you know, frying these fish sticks up. <laughs> yeah, the funny stop, man. That's I mean, that's an old school place. It's there's nothing fancy about it. The, you, you know, it's nope. it's like this is our place. You don't like it, get the fuck out. You know, that's basically what it is there. I like that. Good atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. And then the Red Fox, uh, uh, cr- the the bar across the hall is called the Red Fox. So yeah. that's where we always we go afterwards. So you know, and I'm a big Red Fox fan. So. Um, yeah, I, I love all that stuff. You know, I'm old school, yeah. man. I hold, and that's why, again, McSorley's a great place to do, you know, my, my new album. Cause that's the kind of place McSorley's is like, if you're not drinking fast enough, they go, yeah, you got to leave. Cause you know, we got people who want to come right, in right, and right. drink, you know? Yeah. And I, I love that. I love the old, just the old school vibe of, of these places. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's like sports stadiums, right? It's like, you go to these, some of these new arenas and there's yeah. just no pizzazz whatsoever. Oh, that's definitely true. That's true. Yeah. My uh, Jets play at one of those stadiums. That stadium is a piece of trash. I know. The Jets are trash. The Giants are trash. <laughs> I mean, New York I'm just sport- hoping Aaron- <laughs> well, yep. I was going to say, I, I just hope Aaron Rodgers lasts twice as long this year. <laughs> Get 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 ten plays in this year, it's, or whatever yeah. it was. I know it was the first play. I can't remember. I mean, he's old as dirt at this point. So I you know, relying on a forty year old coming off a torn Achilles doesn't seem like a great scenario. But uh, you never know. And if he loses, maybe he'll run for vice president. He's not running for vice president now. But I, well, I see now. I see a yeah. ticket. I see a ticket, Don, of The Rock <laughs> and Aaron Rodgers in twenty twenty eight. I think we can see that. I, I ain't ruling that out, man. Yeah. And and you know you you can't rule Aaron Rodgers out either because you know he's got all these crazy ways to you know that he cures himself. Like did yeah. he like you know like bury himself in a cave and then he came out like on Easter like Jesus? And yeah. Now he says he's all healed again. And yeah. He's he is risen and yes. uh, so speaking. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be Brett Favre all over again that's, for the Jets. I hope they know <laughs> that. That's so hundred percent true. <laughs> speaking of which, by the way. I mean, when I think of of Christianity, the first person I think for answers is you. So, um, <laughs> tell where the hell did the bunny come from? By the way, does anybody know where did the bunny come from? The bunny, I know. Right? Why does the bunny have to do with Jesus? Yeah, how did that? We gotta we gotta get your crack staff on that. I I don't. Um, yeah, what's the connection? There's like six degrees of Kevin Bacon, but yeah. there's no six degrees of Jesus to the bunny. I, I don't know where that comes from. We'll, we'll have to. We're gonna have to delve into that on yet another podcast. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Let me ask from you: this. Jesus to the bunny. <laughs> Jesus to the bunny. That's it. Uh, by the way, this is like totally out of left field. But did you? Were you a, a fan of the original Roadhouse movie? No, I was not. Really? I I think you're the only person around my age that didn't like it. What did you, and did you watch the new one or no? I, I'm I'm still watching movies with Vincent Price in them. Oh my god, you like all those yeah, old movies, huh? Yeah, I don't I don't I'm not big into. I like Michael Douglas. That's like the most current actor that I like. You know, he's got a show coming out this week, Michael. Douglas. Oh yeah, what is it? He's playing Benjamin Franklin. Well, and he doesn't even need a costume. No. <laughs> How old he is now. <laughs> That's right. He's like 106. So he's yeah, going to, you know, he might have been Benjamin Franklin. I don't know. Maybe he is. Wow. Why Why do you bring up the Roadhouse? You no, because there no. was, just because uh, I had brought it up because they did a remake and it just came out and it was, it was decent. But uh, I love the original. I felt like it was such a cult classic for people my age. And you and I, I think, are, now you're younger than me. How old are you, Don? I can't remember. 57. Oh man, I thought you were younger than me. You're not. You're only five years older than me. So, but mm-hmm. I don't know. But I just thought like people are around our age all love that movie. And then I mentioned it on UCSS like a couple of weeks ago, and the young guys on the set had never even heard of it. And I'm like, what? What planet are you living on? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. yeah but who was that? Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, he got jacked. Holy moly, that guy got yeah. jacked. For that. Like, good for him. Yeah, he would have been good in the steroid era in baseball. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly would. <laughs> All right, do you have that? Well, you're a you're a Mets fan, not a Yankees fan. So the Yankees are off to a good start, but uh, the Met, have you given up on the Mets season already? <laughs> it's way too early for that, Adam. But mm. I, you know, it's it's the little things that make you mental, right? Because and you're on cloud nine. 
You're, you know, your your Cleveland Indians are already going to the World Series after wow. ten games. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, your Cleveland Lake Shores, whoever they are in these days, I don't yeah. know the Cleveland Naps, the Naps, um, the Spiders, the Spiders. But and I'm happy for you because yeah, again, I, you, you know, I'm only talking to you because I want you to get me tickets for the, one of the games this weekend. <laughs> but um, you, the, they play the Braves last night, right? So they they win the one game. You that they're going to win against the Braves the whole season last night. And you want to be happy about it. But Julio Tehran, who's now pitching for the Mets, pitched for the Braves for years and years. The Mets in in 10 years never got one hit off of Julio Tehran. He lost two and a third last night, and he's knocked out of the game. These are the things that keep me up at night in a rage. It's like, of course, every time someone comes to my team, it's it, it's a complete disaster. Like I said with Aaron Rodgers, it's going to be Brett Favre all over again. Why don't these people see these billionaires in their jobs? They're the smartest people ever. As soon as they buy a sports team, the dumbest human on earth. I, it is amazing because the Mets have the highest payroll in the history of baseball, and they suck. <laughs> like, how is that possible? <laughs> Yeah, and you guys are what twenty seventh or something? I think 29th, 28th. I mean, some yeah, somewhere around there. They have no payroll. Yeah, I know. And the Mets just look they they look, they look like a five hundred team, but yeah. way too early. But I, the one thing I I always hang my hat on we do I think we have the best booth in the business with Keith and Ron and Gary. Those guys are tremendous. So they are even even in the doldrums of of a lost season. Uh, if they're in there, you go, ah, I'll watch because those guys are fun. Yeah, much better than the Yankees. The Yankees have the better team, but the Mets have the better broadcasters. But you uh, but you predicted, I saw you predicted on uh, your X account that uh, Yankees, not even a playoff team. I did. I predicted it yesterday, I, uh, last year, and I was correct. Now, so far, my prediction looks bad, but it's early. And yeah. the reason I keep predicting them not make, to not make the playoffs is because the division is really tough, and they're old. And I don't like their pitching. And so far, they've been good. But the injuries will pile up. It's a matter of time before Judge is on the injured list. It's a matter of time before Stanton's on the injured list. I mean, Soto's fantastic. But I just don't love their pitching, and I think it'll catch up with them. We'll see. But, man, the Orioles. You know the Orioles AAA team, by the way, has scored, I think, a record number of runs in 10 games. They've scored, I don't even know. I, like, I feel like it's like 200 runs. It's obviously not been that many. But the Orioles AAA lineup, if, if uh, let me put it this way, if the Orioles offered their Triple A lineup, not even the pitching, their Triple A lineup to the Oakland A's for their entire roster, the A's would do it in, in two seconds. That's how bad the A's are. Well, that would be. I uh, look. Uh, that would yeah. be good for um, obviously to have Baltimore really back in the mix in a strong yeah. way because Camden Yards one of the oh. one of the classic uh, baseball stadiums in America, but. Yeah. Um, you know, really not since Cal Ripken have we no. had a lot of hope. But is Oakland going to – are they going to go to Vegas? Is that is Eventually, that they're playing in Sacramento the next three years. The whole thing's a oh mess. The whole thing's a mess. Yeah. Do you – by the way, have you been to Wrigley Field? I don't know if I've ever asked you this before. Oh, yeah, a bunch of times. I mean, is that place the best or what? Um, well, you know, it's like, it's, it's the, again, it's the, it's the best cause you feel the history of it when yeah. you're in it and, and you, you know, you drink old style while old you're there. Style always. I, I actually got, um, you know, when we were doing the TV show, um, on VH1, we, they, they gave us a, a, a tour. They took us around and gave us a whole tour of the stadium and we got to go out in the, in the outfield and touch the Ivy and everything. Nice. So I gotta say, you know, I, you know, I know. That it seems weird for a fifty year old man to get his kicks from touching Ivy, but you know it's part of baseball history, and yeah. and it, was, it that was really cool. I, I really yeah. enjoyed it. Um, Fenway, same thing, except I was I was so disappointed because I went to Fenway when the Yankees were playing there. This is probably about ten years ago now, yeah. And there was a whole section of Yankee fans. I'm like. Old school Boston fans would have never allowed this no, years ago. You know, I don't like all the, I don't like a lot of the stuff when you go to stadiums where people, you know, throw beers at each other and all. I don't, yeah, no. you know, curse each other out. I don't like that stuff. But, but I was like, really, you got a whole, you got a whole section of Yankee fans, and you're letting them just all sit there and chant like that's, that's right. Something, something no, you got to, you got to bust their balls. That's the, that that has to be some serious ball busting. No, no doubt. By the way, uh, one quick story I wanted to tell you. I thought you'd appreciate this. Do you know Jeff Garland, yeah. the actor, comedian. 
Comedian, right. Yeah, I'm saying the actor, comedian. But anyway, so he's a big Cubs fan. I think he's from Chicago yeah. originally, right? Yeah. So one time I was at Wrigley Field, and I'm not much of a drinker. I don't know if – I can't remember if you know that, but I, I, I rarely drink. I did it I did in college, but since college, I almost never get drunk. But I was at Wrigley Field like 15, 20 years ago, and it was a hot summer day, and we were drinking old styles like they were going out of style. I, I, yeah. I am loaded to the gills. <laughs> so after the game, my friends and I were like, we're going to the bars because the because after the game's over at Wrigley, especially a day game, you go to the bars, the party continues. So I'm walking down the street and I see Jeff Garland. And this would it, this was probably after the first season or two of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Because that show's been on for 20 years, whatever. And I yeah. see him and I'm like, dude, curb your enthusiasm. You're the man. And shockingly, he goes, No, you're the man. And he comes in for a hug. <laughs> I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> well, I suspect yeah. that, you know, Jeff Garland being from Chicago, he knows yeah. when the game's let out. Yeah. And he walks around the stadium waiting for people like you <laughs> to adore him as he parades around the entire stadium. <laughs> uh, that You know what? That's probably true. He, he, he loves the parade. <laughs> All right, this weekend, Friday, Saturday, at the Funny Stop, Don Jameson in town. Make sure you go see him, and I'll ho- hopefully see you out there. We, we gotta, I'll, I'll text you. I got to text okay. you. Okay. Now, the new album, April 19th, No Sleep to McSorley's. Where should they get it? On your website, or where's the best place to go get it? Um, you know, pre-order it, pre-order it now uh, on uh, Apple Music or any of the streaming services they have available for pre-order. I'll have physical copies this weekend. At the Funny okay. Stop on CD, I'm going to put out vinyl later in the summer because again I'm old school and yep. um, yeah. But just come on out to the show and have a few friggin' laughs. Gary from Howard Stern would approve of the vinyl. He loves that. He uh, loves his vinyl. Yeah, yeah. Do you? By the way, is Richard Richard Christie? Is he that good a, a rock a drummer? Is he that special? Because they talk about it. I figured if anybody would know, it's you. He's honestly, man, he, he's one of the best, you know, it's wild. He, he's such a doofus on the show. I mean, I made a good way, but he's a doofus and you wouldn't have guessed yeah. that. But yeah, he's got, you know, he's, he's got a, a big audience in that, in the metal world. You know, yeah. he was, he was with a real uh, groundbreaking band back in the day, but yeah, I think more people know him now for, you know, wearing a diaper to concerts <laughs> and, and being in it. So he doesn't have to miss any of his favorite songs. <laughs> So funny. Uh, and and Don's keep an eye out for his new podcast, Rock Strap. I'll, I'll, I'll once it once it's out, I'll 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 spread the word as well. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, thanks so much, Bull Man. I appreciate you. That was a lot of fun talking with Don Jameson. It's always great when he comes to town. Check him out at the Funny Stop um, on Friday and Saturday. Two shows each night. It's going to be great. Don's always a lot of fun. And thanks to him for joining me. Thanks to Monzo for producing. And thanks to you all for watching and listening. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you next time. Where else but right here in the bullpen with Adam the Bull. Brought to you by Bet Rivers. See you, everybody.